Hi guys, my name is Nancy. Welcome to a video on sewing machine maintenance and troubleshooting tips. Um, today we're going to work with a sewing machine that's a little more modern. This is my personal machine. This is a Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. It is a fully digital machine. Sewing machines come in a couple different varieties. A lot of the newer machines are fully digital. A lot of older machines are fully mechanical. What this really means is that the way you operate the machine is the more the digital ones are operated with motherboards and computer chips and the mechanical ones are operated as by electricity and motors and stuff like that so um, there's pros and cons to each of them I won't really go over that uh, today because that's not really what we're here for we are really here to talk about what happens and what you should do when stuff goes wrong when you're sewing so in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is take a quick tour of my machine so I can show you the parts, where everything is, and some of the aspects of sewing machines that are pretty much consistent over all models. The thing that we're going to talk about is where items are. You have two threads in your machine, a top thread and a bottom thread. The top thread is pretty much always just called thread, and the bottom thread is almost always called a bobbin. And a bobbin is a small piece of plastic or metal that you wind string around. And these either drop in or some older machines will have their bobbins right here. And you'll have to slide a piece off of the machine in order to get to the bobbin. And there's almost always a thread guide on newer machines. I'll show this a little closer up a little later in the video. Top here is the top thread. My spindle pulls out so I can easily load it. My machine has a thread guide of how to thread the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and thread that really quick so we can talk about a couple other parts of the machine. All the machines will have controls on the front. Mine is a touch screen. So I can go into whatever stitches I want, say I want a zigzag stitch, and I can adjust left or right, or so I can adjust the width of the stitch this way, and the length of the stitch that way. Usually I always use the defaults, um, unless I need to, unless there's like a specific reason why I wanted the stitches smaller. There's a speed gauge, so I can go faster or slower. There is a backup button, backstitch button. This button will push the needle down or pull it back up and this will automatically cut the thread on my machine. All machines also have a manual wheel on the side. Even the digital ones. This when you turn it pushes the needle up and down. So I've bumped my camera a little closer so we can see a little bit better what's going on down here underneath the arm of the sewing machine. So, our bobbin case is right here. Like I talked about before, some machines have their bobbin case in the front. Um, most modern machines have them as a drop-in bobbin case. There's always a lever that will allow you to unlatch the cover of the bobbin case and slide it off so that you can change your bobbin. There's always, sewing machines operate, this is called a foot, um, and there's a lot of different types of feet that you can have on your sewing machine. Right now I have a standard foot on my machine. These teeth right here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, there's like six of them. These teeth are called feed dogs. And this is what pushes your fabric through the machine at a constant rate so that the needle and bobbin can sew the fabric. So these you can leave up, or I talked about before doing free motion quilting. You can quilt on a smaller machine. Um, and you So this lever down here, this lever, if I were to switch this over to the left, the, the feed dogs would go down ever so slightly and they would stop moving so they wouldn't catch the fabric. And that would allow me to do free motion quilting. You need a special foot on your machine to do free motion quilting. 
Your needle's always in the middle, that never changes. It's a little hard to see because of all the metal, but there's the needle. You can change your needle if you need to. There is a screw over here. My camera doesn't go any lower, so it's a little harder to see. I'm actually just going to tip the machine. There is a screw right here that you can twist out or loosen and pull your needle out. So if you need to change it, sort of like if you break a needle or something. My machine has an automatic thread cutter. Every, ne every machine since the 60s probably, I'm ballparking on that, has a thread cutter. This is my thread cutter. It's almost always on the back left corner of the arm of your machine. And if you slide your thread behind that slot and pull. Okay, here's what the top of my sewing machine looks like unthreaded and opened up. Every machine can be threaded two ways. It can be threaded to go into the needle down here, or it can be threaded to wind a bobbin on this post up here. My machine thankfully has a thread guide already pressed into the plastic. I am going to go ahead and just dust. So I'm going to thread this first to the needle down below, and then I'm going to thread it for a bobbin and show you how to wind a bobbin. So the spool goes on the spool spindle. Mine came with felt circles to make sure it spins properly and a thread cap. You have to have this thread cap. This is very important. I am going to fold the spool down. And my machine stipulates that the thread has to come out this way from underneath. And then there's a number one right here. So we're going to go first to number one. And then there's a number two. Let's go around two. goes through three right there, which is that slot between the pink and the white. There's a four down here. It's going to go down and around four. And then it's going to go up to five and around five and down. There is always a little metal clip just above or like a, a twist or something that looks like a curly cue. You want to thread your thread through that twist and then you can thread your needle. Almost all of your troubleshooting problems are going to come from your machine being misthreaded. As the machine sews, it is possible for it, especially in newer machines, for the thread to jump out of position. And when we say jump, it means it's not seated right in these mechanical workings up here. And that messes with your tension on the thread and causes the machine to malfunction. 90, well, 80% of the time with my machine, it's because it needs to be rethreaded. Okay, now we're going to thread this to wind a bobbin. So what we're going to need is an empty bobbin. So mine, to thread the needle, we're going to thread that way. To thread the bobbin, we're going to go up and around because we want the thread to go this back post where we're going to put the bobbin. So we're going to go up at one, just like normal, around this post over here at two, and then behind this lever and around that screw. This is a tension disc. And pop the thread into that tension disc and now we can go ahead and thread the bobbin get the thread through that bobbin and pull and now we're going to pop the bobbin onto the spindle over here until it snaps now some machines have a function on the LCD screen or on the machine itself that you switch the way that the machine spins to thread a bobbin. Mine is very simple. I'm going to push this post over to the right. So from here you'll press your pedal and it'll start winding. So I'm going to push this back over to the left. Oops. Take the bobbin out and I'm going to cut this thread. Okay, those are all the different parts of the machine. Now we're going to go through 
what happens, what you do when something goes wrong. For the sake of science and demonstration, I'm going to try to make my machine jam. And we're going to pray that this doesn't go horribly wrong. I don't know if that's going to come through on the video, but I can hear the bobbin casing jumping around in there and rattling. And that's usually a good sign that we're well on our way to a jam. You want to be listening to the, the sounds that your machine makes. This is actually very important if you're going to consistently sew. Everything should run smoothly. There shouldn't be any rattling inside the machine. Nothing should be jumping around. You shouldn't have any weird clanking or clunking noises as soon as you hear something that's a problem. Once you hear those noises, my first recommendation would be to stop, rethread the machine, and slow down. I wasn't able to get my sewing machine to jam by working with that one single piece of fabric. What we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about how what this jam looks like and how we're going to fix it. So my bobbin is in here. I already took the cover off. So I'm going to pull the bobbin out, and when I pull the bobbin out, you're going to see that there's these two thread tails right here. If I try to pull on these, they're not coming out. If I turn the machine on also, it the, mach the needle won't move. So if I try to manually turn the hand wheel, I can't move the needle, so it is stuck. You are going to need to take the throat plate off and try to fish that thread out manually. So I'm going to get out my screwdriver, and I'm going to take these screws off. We're going to very carefully pull that throat plate off. There we go. So we got it off. Now, I can see another thread back here. I don't know if you guys can see that. But what I want to do right now is take this bobbin casing out and you can see that this there's a loop of thread around the spindle on the bobbin case. So I want to take that thread out and there is a big knot in it. So there's a knot in that string. And I see another piece down here that I'm going to try to fish out because I don't want to leave any threads inside of the casing. There we go. So there's one more thread. And that looks pretty good. It looks clear. There we go. Okay. I know that it's clear because the sewing machine needle went back into position. And we're going to go ahead and put this back together. Now, sometimes I will actually take this moment to oil the machine. The machines come with a brush to clean the inside. Mine did not. So I have just a stiff nylon bristled paintbrush here. This one I got from the dollar store, so it's not too expensive. And I'm going to use this to gently brush out the inside of my machine. You can already see how much fuzz is coming off of that. So it's a considerable amount of fuzz. We don't want the fuzz in there because it can cause the machine to jam if it builds up too much. See, yeah, look at that. That's that's gross. I'm also going to dust these pieces around the outside. I am also going to dust the bobbin casing. I'm going to take my swirl my paintbrush around the inside, brush the outside. I'm going to be careful of these little bristles right here. Those are what guide the thread over the bobbin case, so you don't want to damage them. So dusting is the first part. If you would like, you can also use canned air for this. If you're going to use canned air, be very careful that you're not pushing the dust further into the machine. And if you're going to use canned air, my recommendation is to set the nozzle on top of the machine and just give it a few quick... Just a few quick blasts. That's really all you need. Step two 
is to oil your machine. You can buy sewing machine oil at any major craft store. They come in a variety of different containers. You don't want to just use any oil on your sewing machine. If you don't use the right oil, it can melt the parts inside of your machine, specifically the plastic ones. So you want to be very careful what kind of oil you're using. This is a staple vegetable oil, I believe, I think is what the Dritz website said because I looked it up. Um, but you, you really want to be careful. So to oil your machine, you don't need a lot of oil. You need very, very little, which is good because it makes one of these bottles last forever. I'm going to place a very small dot here on the plastic outside portion. And then I'm going to place a very small dot on the back wall of my bobbin case. I'm going to do the inside and the back. So very, very small dots. I'm going to put the bobbin casing back in there and get the lid out. You don't need to put oil inside of the bobbin because you also don't want to stain your thread. So you want to only put the oil in places where you don't have the oil rubbing against the thread. And then to distribute that oil, use the hand wheel on your machine to turn that outer metal bobbin casing a couple times. So we've got everything back in. Now we're ready to replace the face plate, throat plate, and then I'm going to replace the screws. That's in there. Alrighty, thank you guys for joining me for this video. Um, I hope that it was helpful or at least mildly informative. Um, if you have any other issues, uh, you can search in YouTube or on Google for the model of your machine and then troubleshooting or the specific issue that you're having. And there, for almost every machine, there's a, either a, there's a manual online or some kind of tutorial of somebody walking you through a problem. There are also a lot of other channels that will do deeper cleaning for machines, for old ones and new ones, to show you how to actually take apart the machine. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you're very, very familiar with sewing machines. Because by and large, you don't have to do that as a normal, everyday sewer. There are also a lot of shops that you can take your sewing machine to if there's an actual problem that you really, really can't fix. But for the most part, the, the problems that you run into with sewing machines, you can fix yourself. Please like the video, subscribe to AADL TV for a lot of new videos by a lot of other creators um, and my coworkers at Ann Arbor District Library. In the meantime, stay safe. Stay happy, and don't forget to love each other. Bye!